Hi, my name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. So, week 23's video was super short because I was in the middle of things and just were chilling. This video is going to be longer because I finish things. I know I mentioned in the last video that it was the worldwide write-a-thon going on and I participated in the first beginning sprints and then my brain went, I'm tired. And then I started finishing books. So it, it ended up a profitable weekend for me, no matter what. So jumping in, the first thing I finished was my elephant. Yes, I finished this. I know I started back in April, so I've been reading it for two months, but I really love this book actually. <laughs> so much that I'm going to do a separate review for video for this because there's a lot of things I'd like to talk about but to just kind of give a little bit of detail now I really like that the characters in this for me they felt very real and it wasn't that they were having a miscommunication trope but that they just don't always choose to talk with one another and also when they do it doesn't mean you're going to get the reaction you want because everyone has their own opinions. For example, when Terrain ends up working for Luca, Pruitt immediately was like, oh, you're sleeping with her, even though there had been no indication of that. But that's how the mistrust of the Baladarians Pruitt has, that she, immediately that's where she went. I also really enjoyed the world building as I'm reading this and noticing that all the Baladarians have the French sounding names and then look, realizing later that, yeah, no, the Baladarian society is modeled after France, and the Kazal society is modeled after Morocco, and that's where the author did her research. That was really cool because it the places feel real. I felt like I was in Kazal, in the city, in both of the medinas, in the temple, in the slum tent city outside. I felt like I was there, and that is an impressive, impressive writing for me. Again, I'm going to have a separate review for this because there are a lot of things that I want to talk about. Then I finished The Necessity of Stars by E. Catherine Tobler, and this is one of the novellas that was nominated for the Nebula, and we follow a woman called, or we followed a woman named Brion as she lives in a place called Irislands. Now, in her time in society, there has been extreme climate change, but Iris Lands is one of the few locations that still is an oasis. Things are still thriving. Animals that were thought extinct, she has seen here at her home. At the same time, Brion, uh, Brione is getting older and her memory is starting to go. I'm, I'm not sure if it's Alzheimer's or dementia, but she definitely is losing time, losing words, and she's not seeking any help for this. She's kind of hoping that her boss isn't going to notice so she can continue doing her job, though her best friend has noticed, but is allowing her to be who she is. And then during this time, Brioni notices that her garden is not behaving the way that she's used to it behaving, and she ends up meeting Tora on the cover. Now this is written in a very interesting style um, because Brioni's mind is going and she's losing time. It goes back and forth actually in timeline and we spend a lot of time inside of her head. So sometimes she's questioning if something she saw is actually real or not. So I, I found the world building in this actually really good as well with the climate change and how the societies have become very different. For example, the United Kingdom, they just refer to as the kingdom, and they've become very insular and closed off. And the UN, I guess at one point of time, had a lot more power, but because they never acted upon climate change or anything, it seems, they have lost a lot of their power. It ends up being a ripe time for a first contact. And it's a novella. I don't want to spoil it. There's just too many different factors. The, the first contact part isn't spoiling because she talks about it like the very first page. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, she talks about her the very first page. Again, very interesting. 
um, if you are looking for an unusual style of writing. Then I finished another novella that was recommended for the nebulas, and that is Sun Daughters, Sea Daughters by Amy Ogden. This is like a Little Mermaid story, but of what happens after. Also has great world building. It's set in a future in a society where humans have been gene altered to survive on the planets they live on, and Atuli, the main character, is a child of the sea. And that is where she lived growing up until she fell in love with a man on the land and asked her best friend, the witch of the sea, to help her. And she didn't know the cost. And afterwards, there was different wars. And this story picks up after that. There is a plague that's going around for the people on the land, and Atuli is not affected by it because even though she has been changed so she can live on the land, she is not of the land and her genetics still don't operate the same way. So in a quest to find a cure for the people of the land, who they call the Vo, she goes back to her old friend, the Sea Witch. And the Sea Witch has the capability of going up into space and so they go on an adventure. The whole drive of this is to find this cure. And at the same time, Atuli and Yanja, Yanja's the sea witch, are having to deal with what happened in the past and resolve their own thoughts and feelings with each other, but also look, it's a look at how, while a society can function, is it the best society for everyone? And is this what everyone necessarily wants? both the Thule and Yanja because they were really, they, they were best friends beforehand. They both were always looking outward and upward, but one was looking to the land and one was looking to the stars. Like I said, very, very interesting world building in this one. You can tell the author took a lot of time thinking, how would the society actually work? And she used examples of creatures we have on our earth to help kind of frame the genetics of and life, how that would happen, and I really enjoyed it. So the last thing I finished was Perils of Sea and Sky, the arc I was given, and for this I will also have a singular review, probably closer to when it comes out. This book was a roller coaster for me. I started out really, really enjoying it, and it turned my expectations on my head, and then we got to the middle, and I still enjoyed it, still want to know what was happening. And again, it thwarted my expectations, which is not a bad thing. It's a, it seems to be more of a different kind of form of storytelling, but I felt like too much was trying to be said. And then it wraps up and it wraps up very neatly, which was interesting. <laughs> again, I will have a review closer to the time of publication. So. It's been a great reading week for me. as So I finished four items and then I picked up two. I read the first chapter of Machinehood by S.B. Divya, which is like an AI kind of society from what I've gotten. And I'm interested in continuing reading it, but I was more interested in continuing reading The All-Consuming World by Cassandra Ka, which also happens to be my buzzword sci-fi prompt for this month with the word all. So. I am about just shy of halfway through this one. This is about a group of mercenaries who, after a tragic accident, had separated. Are they're now members of this group are now trying to get the band back together, and each one is being sold on a different story. So there, you know, there's going to be more fallout of what's happening. Yeah, that's kind of what's going on. We. I would think one of the through line views is Maya and Maya's catchy like oh hey that's not what you told you told this to this person you told this to me you're not telling all of this the same thing so what's actually the truth and I think this might be kind of her realization that the person that she's always been working for is not exactly who they thought but I could be wrong it's always fun to guess the things ahead of time though so I'm enjoying this one this is quite brutal and has a lot of swearing. So if neither of those are your things, I don't think this will be for you. 
but I like the science fiction elements, especially because they have like very AI personalities and how the AI have developed is interesting. Interesting is probably my favorite word, but hey, if something's interesting, that's how it gets my attention. So for my writing wrap up, I did write during the Worldwide Write-a-thon. I you know, worked on my different writing excuses, homework, videos, and I'm still currently working on one of them. It, it's taken an ensemble, having each character in the ensemble do their own self-view, and then after that they have to do how they view everyone else in the group, which has been very interesting. And my ensemble is 12 people, which dropped one from the zero draft that I had written. So zero draft had 13. Draft one, I was like, mm, this other character never really used them, but, and I took them out. So now I'm down to 12. So probably will be continuing to do that. I am hoping to do Camp Nano, but I haven't decided on any project. I kind of just put it as my goal, like write 500 words a day, getting really back into the writing habit. And for me, I can generally write 500 words in one or two 15 minute sprints. So that's not like an unreasonable goal. It's just being consistent. And then for other media, I had a pretty balanced week. I did read books. I did write and I did watch some things, which isn't always normal for me, but Hey, I had a four day weekend. So I had a little more time. So some of the fun things that I watched, one was The Lost City, the one with Sandra Bullock. I always enjoy her her movies. They make me laugh. And this one was better than I thought it was going to be. If you've watched Romancing the Stone, it has similar vibes and at the same time kind of pokes fun at it. Sandra Bullock's character is Loretta something, I forget, um, who is a romance author who gets kidnapped because she, in her newest book she mentioned a city that the villain who is played by Daniel Radcliffe yes Harry Potter is looking for and he thinks that she can help him it was it was a fun romp and it balanced really well with the funny and the serious moments that gave it more depth so I really did enjoy this movie I then watched Infinite with Mark Wahlberg sorry I almost was going to say Mark Watney. I'm like, no, that's the character in The Martian. Mark Wahlberg. And this was like a story of where people are reincarnated and there's a few hundred people who can remember their past lives. And they have created a society where half of them think that they need to help better the world and the other half want to stop having this happen to them and want to end the world because if the world ends, they can't be reborn. And the story premise is really interesting. The execution felt very rushed and then boring, which is sad because I really like the villain. I'm gonna butcher his name. I think it's Chihuahua. I've seen him in many things. Um, he's not always the villain, but he does play a great villain. I mean, it's one of those things. You can have a great cast and sometimes the movie just feels eh, but that's kind of how it was for me. And yeah, I think we're going to wrap up there. That was my week 25. How was yours?